Hello and welcome to What The Hey. Thank you very much for joining me to learn the answer to a question that I received. And when I go to my notebook of knowledge, I see that the question is written as, What the hey is puppet combo? And this question comes from Mr2007YT. So hello to you and thank you very much for the question. So to start, if I had to give my own basic answer to this question, I would say that Puppet Combo is an independent video game development studio. And what it tends to focus on is producing short 80s inspired horror experiences. If you want an answer from the actual studio, they say that Puppet Combo is the home of sleaze, gore, madmen, slashers, and maniacs. So a lot of spooky stuff. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to split up the information between talking about Puppet Combo as a studio and then later down the line I'll talk about the game. So I'm trying to summarize it in a helpful way, at least I think so. And as always, I'll have links to the information that I got in the description, so if you want to do some like of your own personal research you can. So the actual history of Puppet Combo at this point has been going on for quite a while because the founder, Benedetto Cucuza, fancy fun name, I hope I pronounced that semi-correct, made the studio back in 2012, so it's been around for give or take 11 years. Which you may or may not recognize Puppet Combo under its initial name that was Pig Farmer Games back when it was originally founded, but it's kind of evolved over the years, which is cool. Which you may or may not recognize Puppet Combo through a whole list and category of other games done and labeled under Torture Star Video, which is a whole nother project that Ben has worked on, but it's all fairly similar content, but that's another thing you can look into. And because Puppet Combo has so many games, as I'll go on later to explain, it's kind of hard to know what they're actually working on and kind of what they're doing. So if you want to stay up to date with all the projects that they're doing and what they're actually planning on releasing, they have quite a few different social media accounts. Like they have a Patreon, which is, as I'll go on to explain, where you can get a majority of the games. Um, they also have a Facebook, a Discord, a Twitter, an Instagram, a YouTube, a Tumblr, an Itch.io, and then a whole other website for their indie projects so there's a lot you can check up on and then if you also want to support them aside from getting their video games they actually have a merch website so if you want like an epic shirt you can get that but as I just mentioned, as a studio, the main way in which you as like a consumer can actually get access to their games, they usually stress that the best way to do it is by going to their Patreon and supporting them for their games. They also have their games accessible on Itch.io and Steam, but if you look at the Puppet Combo website, they kind of stress the importance and like the helpfulness of getting their games on Patreon, and they also apparently have their games on consoles, and some of them are on like mobile. So if you need a specific format for the game, it's probably there, but they really do like Patreon. So, you know, I'll probably have links to all this stuff. So if you want to check it out for yourself, you can. Now is the really fun part of the video where I can actually explain and list some of the games. That way you know whether or not you actually want to check them out because they are kind of intense. But to get started with actually explaining the games that Puppet Combo has, some examples would be Stay Out of the House, Babysitter Bloodbath, Nun Massacre, The Power Drill Massacre, The Night Ripper, Murder House, Blood Wash, Spiders, Feed Me Billy, and there are many, many more. Now what's really cool about Puppet Combo, and this is going into my opinion a little bit, is the fact that pretty much all of the games have been done by the developer. Like they pretty much have full control of what the game turns out to be. According to the FAQ on the Puppet Combo website from the developer themselves, they say that they do have like artists and music people come in to enhance their games and make them really cool. But for a majority of the time, it's a solo project, which is really cool. And they do tell people that in terms of making their games, they do it in Unity 3D and Blender, which is pretty fun. I like the fact that they actually explain how the games work and how they do them, like that's cool. Also on the Puppet Combo website, the developer also kind of clues consumers into like how and why they make their games the way that they do. And one of the things that they share is the fact that in terms of playing the games, there's not one that you necessarily have to start off with. They do suggest ones that are kind of helpful to get into like, you know, the atmosphere of Puppet Combo, but there's no like connecting story. So you can kind of just play whichever one you want, which I think is also cool. Like it's easy. You don't have to worry about knowing all of the puppet combo lore which is helpful but despite the fact that all of the games aren't connected with their actual story they're all pretty similar in genre and design 
like one of the phrases and terms that the developer uses on their website to describe their games is saying that they're usually kind of revolving around slasher horror themes. To kind of enhance that, they do also list some genres that a majority of the games fall under, like survival horror, stealth, reverse horror, platforming, and shooters. Like, the games aren't the same thing every time, but you kind of know what to expect, but you're still gonna run into surprises, which is cool. However, despite all of the similarities between the games, the developer does stress the fact that most of them are not jump scare, you know, dependent, which is kind of unique for a horror game. Like on the website, the developer does mention the fact that a lot of people assume that all of their video games have jump scares. It's just the fact that the ones that they're really known for do, but that's not necessarily the case for every game that you might play. From an outsider's perspective, it kind of makes sense as to why people would jump to conclusions because all of the games are kind of similar in terms of having like PS1 low poly VHS tape graphics, which is kind of spooky, so you assume you're gonna get scared. Which the developer kind of lists examples of inspirations for their video games like horror, true crime, general life experiences, and then actual media examples through film and video games like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Resident Evil, and Friday the 13th, which all aren't jump scare heavy. So when starting to go into my general opinion, I would say that my favorite aspect of puppet combo games would be the fact that they have a VHS filter effect. I grew up watching old movies on VHS tapes, so seeing that effect on a video game, because I didn't really play many spooky or horror video games on the PlayStation or anything when I was growing up, but I still think that's really cool. The filter can be taken off while playing the video game, so I like the fact that that's something that's there as an option because it is a little distracting when playing the video games, but it's really cool. The video games themselves are pretty neat. I've never actually played one myself, but I've seen lots of people play them on YouTube and on the website the developer does say that playing them versus watching them is a whole different experience so I think that I need to for the sake of you know actually experiencing it and actually getting spooked because watching people play it is really fun and it makes it less stressful for me um, so I think I need to. But from what I've seen, all of the video games are fairly simplistic in terms of their storyline. The graphics, of course, are pretty low quality, but that's on purpose, which I also appreciate because I didn't grow up playing PS1, but I grew up playing PS2, and the graphics are pretty similar, so I love the fact that the, like, the developer took experiences and stuff that they enjoyed from their childhood and is like making like current and new video games, but in an older style, and it's really cool that way. Which what's interesting about Puppet Combo as like an independent video game development studio is the fact that their games, as I mentioned like way back, are fairly short. They're not like 15 minutes, but they're also not super drawn out and super long and super boring and super annoying which the plots of the games are pretty simple and straightforward. Like you don't need to be thinking super in depth about, you know, like the story of a video game when half the time you're running around and trying not to die, which it's also nice because there are like varying levels of difficulty that you can choose from in these games. In general, they're pretty hard and pretty detailed. So, you know, if you want to make it harder for yourself, you can. But I do think the fact that these games aren't super long is also kind of nice because Puppet Combo isn't trying to draw them out and make them longer than they should be. Like they're short, concise, and to the point and you're getting, you know, the experience that you want to. You're getting spooked and you're running around and you're screaming and it's scary and I think that's great. They do it really well. In general, I just think it's very interesting to see the way in which Puppet Combo as a studio does their games because on their website they kind of answer questions related to like how their games aren't necessarily similar to old PS1 games like Resident Evil and stuff, but they're also not super jump scary or whatever. Like they're very unique and apparently some people criticize that, but I think it's cool. 
I think I just need to psych myself up for actually playing one because I've watched videos of the Nun Massacre and it already freaks me out because I'm personally someone who hates knowing when like a character is chasing me or something like that's scary. The audio effects like the screaming in the puppet combo games are scary like the loud sudden noises are scary um, and then you know the low graphics you can make a spooky game spooky without having super crazy graphics so the fact that you can't always see that well in the video game is also kind of cool so I just think the way they do their video games is very neat and very spooky but I believe that is a very basic and simple answer to the question. Once again, if you want to check out the games for yourself or do more research independently, you can. I'll have all those sources listed in the description, but I believe that is the answer to the question. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.